You can't see, smell, or taste PFAS, TTHMs, BPS, and other potentially unhealthy endocrine disrupting or carcinogenic chemicals. The only way to know what's in your drinking water is to test it. And that's exactly what Simple Labs Tap Score product does. We ordered three separate tests, one for our tap water, one for our refrigerator water dispenser, and one for our zero water countertop filter to see what each of these presents in our drinking water. Are they really working and what's in them? Tap Score ships with everything you need to test your water. There's two bottles, one plastic and one glass. There's also a chlorine test strip that you can test your tap water's chlorine with since it's unstable and evaporates quickly. All the instructions are in the box too. They recommend you run your tap water for a few minutes to clear out anything that might be lurking in the pipes, then collect your samples for more accurate results. Keep track of which test is for what, and you can do this online easily. Box everything up and use the prepaid mailing label included with each kit. In a few days, Simple Lab will email your test results. And here's what we found. Under test results, you'll see six columns. The first is the analyte, or the substance being tested for. The second column is the unit of measurement used when the substance is detected. Most are micrograms per liter rather than parts per million, so you can convert those if you need to. The third column is labeled result, and that's where you'll see a measurement number if something shows up during testing. The fourth column is labeled MDL for method detection limit. MDL is the lowest concentration of an analyte which testing instrumentation and the analysis team is configured to measure. The fifth column shows the federal standard used to gauge whether the levels are acceptable. And then the last column shows whether your water is greater or less than the EPA limit when something appears during testing. Results are evaluated using the federal maximum contaminant level, MCL, an enforceable primary drinking water standard set by the US EPA. MCLs are the highest concentration of a contaminant permitted in drinking water from public water systems. Our first tests were on our Florida tap water here in Central Florida. On page one, we find an indication of bromodichloromethane, which is a trihalomethane or THM. I'm having a hard time pronouncing these because they shouldn't be in your water. Most bromodichloromethane is formed as a byproduct when chlorine or chlorine containing chemicals are added to drinking water to kill bacteria. Bromodichloromethane has been used as a flame retardant and a solvent for fats and waxes because of its high density for mineral separation. Studies in lab animals have found liver damage, kidney damage, and decreases in immune response due to bromodichloromethane. It can also cause an increase in early pregnancy miscarriages and decreases in birth weight in animals. Now, these effects found in animals happen at levels much higher than what humans would normally be exposed to in their homes or in their everyday environment. You can see our other videos on this channel that dive into TTHMs, PFAS, and other water pollutants. Uh, for more information. Now, the EPA has published a rule to regulate total trihalomethanes, including bromodichloromethane and others, at a maximum allowable annual average level of 80 parts per billion. Now, our TAP score findings of 4.32 micrograms per liter calculates to 0.00432 parts per million, so you can see we're well under the maximum. The EPA limit for chloroform in drinking water is 100 micrograms per liter, here we're at 11.8 micrograms per liter and well under the allowable limit, but it's still in there. It's good to know. Barium's a little high, uh, maybe because somebody flushed their enema down the toilet. Who knows? Calcium and chloride are also bolded, meaning they're a little higher than normal, but not of major concern here. Page three shows 0.7 micrograms per liter of fluoride. The EPA's highest recommended level is 2.0 micrograms per liter, and the enforceable standard for the highest level of fluoride that is allowed in public water supplies is 4 milligrams per liter. It's set to protect against uh, risk from too much fluoride in your water. Some studies show that too much fluoride can affect attention and learning in children, while higher fluoride levels in drinking water were associated with an increased risk of dementia. We also saw slightly higher levels of magnesium, nitrates and nitrites, potassium, sodium, strontium, and sulfates still all below the lowest EPA recommended levels. Still, I'd rather have less or none just in case we found out later that those levels were actually too high. Our second round of testing was our two week old Whirlpool refrigerator filter. Since this water originates at the tap, we thought it'd be interesting to see if refrigerator filters really worked and removed potentially harmful contaminants from tap water. 
Immediately, we checked for the bromodichloromethane, and it was gone. The Whirlpool filter also removed chloroform, effectively eliminating all TTHMs from our tap water. And the barium was gone as well, so I call that a win. Calcium and chloride were still elevated, but not to unsafe levels. We were surprised to see fluoride was still present at 0.6 micrograms per liter, a very small reduction from the 0.7 we saw in tap water. Strontium was also present, but it was reduced. There was a slightly higher trace of magnesium, and somehow there were finite traces of molybdenum, plus elevated traces of nitrates, nitrites, and potassium. Maybe they're a byproduct of whatever's going on in the Whirlpool filtration system, who knows. On to our third round of testing, we used a one-week-old zero-water filter. Now, zero-water touts that they remove all total dissolved solids from tap water. And according to our own TDS meter, that is a true statement. The real truth is that all dissolved solids aren't all bad for you, and some things that aren't dissolved solids can actually be worse. So we wanted to see what zero-water really removes from our very high TDS Florida tap water. And apparently, zero-water removed a lot. Bromo dichloromethane, gone. Calcium, chloride, fluoride, magnesium, potassium, strontium, nitrates, nitrites, molybdenum, all molybdenum, whatever that's called, all gone. Zero traces detected. The only thing remaining, and we've heard that zero water can't remove this totally, was chloroform, one of the TTHMs. It was reduced substantially from 11.8 micrograms per liter in tap water to just 2.1 micrograms per liter in the zero water. But remember, our Whirlpool refrigerator filter removed all the chloroform, so it might be wise to pre-filter your water with your refrigerator and then pour that water into your zero water filter for longer life and your best results. We didn't test for PFAS or microplastics during these tests, but they're next. So subscribe to this channel to be notified when we present those very important and surprising results from those tests. Please let your family and friends know about this comment if you have results from your area and let us know how they compare to ours. Chuck Fresh, give them well.